favorable genetic changes observed in regular the blood donors. An international team of scientists had identified changes genetic in blood cells of regular donors that support production of new, healthy blood cells, which could potentially reduce risk diseases of leukemia. Blood cells, or leukocytes, thrombocytes, and erythrocytes, they are formed in the bone marrow from stem cells. When people give blood, stem cells produce new blood cells to replace lost blood. In the the aging measure of stem cells in the bone marrow naturally accumulate mutations that can sometimes lead to the development of blood cancers. But the people, which often donates blood, they force the bone marrow to constantly produce new ones, the healthy blood cells. Understanding the differences in mutations that accumulate in our blood stem cells as you age it is important to understand how and why blood cancers develop and how to intervene before the occurrence of clinical symptoms. In a study published in the journal Bloodo, scientists from Francis Crick Institute, in collaboration with researchers from German Cancer Research the Center in Heidelberg and the German Red Cross, analyzed samples blood taken from 217 men in Germany aged 60 to 72. These people they donated blood at least three times a year for 40 years a total of over 120, twice. Researchers also examined the blood of sporadic donors for comparison 212 men at a similar age, who donated blood less than 10 times in total. Analysis showed that people who often donated blood had blood cells with certain mutations in a gene called DNMT3A, which is known to succumbs mutation in people who develop leukemia. But changes in this gene observed in samples from frequent donors were not in areas, which the cancer is taking over. In further work, scientists genetically modified blood stem cells to occur and place them on petri dishes in the lab with unmodified cells. To be imitate blood donation effects, they also added hormone to some samples called the EPO, which the body produces after blood loss and which stimulates production its red blood cells. After a month, modified cells grew by about half faster than those without mutations but only in EPO-containing samples. Without it the hormone both types of cells grew at a similar rate. This suggests that with every donation of blood in the body EPO ejection will appear, which promotes the growth of cells with DNMT3A mutations Hector Werga and Cabo of the Francis Crick Institute in London said. A team of researchers began to wonder if having more mutant blood cells are preferred. To determine this, he mixed them with cells carrying mutations that increase the risk of leukemia. It turned out, that in the presence of EPO, cells with DNMT3A mutation significantly exceeded others and were in it will be more efficient to produce red blood cells. This suggests that DNMT3A mutations they are beneficial and can inhibit the growth of cancer cells. It's like giving blood exerts selective pressure, which improves the condition of stem cells and their ability to replenish Japan is said to Ash Toy from the University of Bristol in the UK. Donating blood not only can you save someone's life, but you can also improve the condition of his circulatory system, he added. More research is needed to verify the findings researchers because laboratory experiments provide a simplified picture of this, what happens in the body. It must be confirmed at a much larger cohorts, among different ethnic groups, among women and other age groups explained by Mark Manser from University College London, who did not participate, research. Scientists believe that regular blood donation is one of the types of activity that selects mutations that allow cells to respond well for blood loss but abandons cancer-related pre-eukemia mutations the blood. Fragments of facial bones from over a million years ago suggest the existence of an unknown ancestor of man. 
fragments of the face found in one of the caves in northern Spain suggests that about a million years ago there lived in Europe much species of our ancestors. The exposed bones are 1.4 to 1.1 million years old and they differ from those considered to date to be the oldest fragments of hominin bones from the same area. In 2022, in a cave complex near the city of Atapirca in the province of Burgos in the north of Spain found fossilized skull fragments, ordinary bone, and a piece of jaw. They were found in sediments with more than 1.1 million years. Research that appeared in the journal Nature they suggest that the face of the bone owner was flatter and did not have many the characteristics of modern man. It does not resemble any other species human found at this time and in this part of the world. Early people left Africa and reached Eurasia as at least 1.8 million years ago. This is evidenced by the fossil skulls dated to this the period found in Dmanasi, Georgia. Fossils from Dmanasi are classified as an early Homo erectus that appeared in Africa 2 million years ago. However, the skulls are so different that some researchers believe that they represent at least two different species as he suggests that more than one species of our ancestors left Africa. For the earliest hominin remains in Western Europe the tooth and jaw fragments from 1,11.2 million years ago shall be recognized. They were found 200-7 o'clock in Cima del Elefante, the same cave as the new finds. Younger human remains, dating back to 800,000 years, were discovered in nearby cave of the Grand Valley. Special features prompted researchers to consider them as a distinct species, namely Homo antecessor. Authors of new research argue that newly discovered remains they have more primitive traits than Homo antecessor. The flat drawings the face and the underdeveloped nose of this individual are more like Homo erectus the first people to leave Africa, used fire, and they made advanced tools. This fossil represents the earliest human face Western Europe, said Maria Martinon Torres, director of Spanish National Center for Human Evolution, CENI. The find is confirms that the widespread ancestor of man, Homo erectus, whose remains are scattered throughout Africa and Asia, has also reached of Western Europe. Rosa Huguet from the Catalan Institute of Paleoecology Man and Social Evolution in Spain, the coordinator of the excavations admitted, that this newly discovered hominin is a new actor in the history of human evolution. However, scientists have only fragments of the skull, which makes it difficult determining his identity. The presence of two types of human species in Atapirca in a distance from 200,000 to 300,000 years shows that more than one type homins traveled across Europe in early Pleistocene. According to the opinion Martinon Torres, Homo erectus, or his close relative appeared he was the first but to leave the Atapirca or died out at the time the glaciers were moving it is through Europe, about 900,000 years ago. Homo antecessor could have originated from populations from Eastern Europe or from Africa and spread to Western Europe. According to the authors of the publication, the owner found fragments of the skull belonged to the older species that came to the Western ones parts of Europe before Homo antecessor. Both species could have met, crossing with each other or just pass. However, the lack of material for research not it allows to make the final classification of this species. Researchers think that in some way was related to Homo erectus, but needed a bigger one the amount of fossils to accurately assess it. As Martinon Torres admitted, Homo antecessor divides with Homo sapiens more contemporary looking face and visible structure of the nasal bone and the features of the faces of the bones are more primitive, resembling Homo erectus, especially in his flat and underdeveloped nasal structure. The researcher also emphasized that bone found differ from the earliest hominins documented outside of Africa, which are represented in Dmanasi. 
According to her, the specimen whose skull fragments were found in northern Spain is somewhere in the evolutionary space between the earliest hominins found outside Africa and Homo antecessor. I think the key finding is that we document a population of hominins we didn't know existed in Europe Martinon Torres said. Researchers also found traces on the teeth suggesting use from something like a toothpick to remove the remains of food from between the teeth. In the, the same layer also found a small mammal bone with traces of incisions the meat was separated from the bones by stone tools. It is up to Phi it suggests that this individual knew how to produce simple but effective tools for the exploitation of the region's resources. Over 100 days with a titanium heart. One Australian has survived 105 days with a titanium heart developed by BIVACOR. The device is used as temporary a solution for people with heart failure who are waiting for a transplant. The heart from titanium, it uses magnetic levitation technology, maglev, the same, which is used in high-speed trains. Titanium heart is the work of BIVACOR. Representatives of companies say their heart is strong enough to keep a man with life even during exercise. For this its size allows implantation of the titanium organ of most men and women. Titanium heart was first used last time year in a 58-year-old man from the United States. Patient after three days after the implantation he freed himself from the ventilator. On the seventh day after the operation, he could walk 150 meters. In total, the man lived with the titanium heart eight days. During this time he found himself the donor and artificial organ have been replaced with a true heart. So far, the titanium heart has been implanted with five the people. A record of life with this organ has just been set by a sixth patient Australians in their 40s who did not want to make their data public. Man lived with the device for more than three months until he underwent surgery implantation of the human heart. Doctors say without a metal solution temporary true heart of the patient would stop working before it was the donor. In all cases, the heart of BIVACOR was used as a temporary measure until the heart is available from the human donor. Some cardiologists say that this can become a permanent option for people who they are not eligible for transplants due to age or other conditions, although this idea still needs to be tested in clinical trials. On the other the site still has many questions about the level of function they can to achieve people with this device and its final cost. The anonymous Australian received Titani pump at the end November of last year. In February, he was allowed to leave the hospital, which was the first such case, because earlier all patients with a titanium organ they were waiting for a human heart transplant in the hospital. At the beginning of March he found the organ for transplantation and the patient received a human heart. The two-chamber device has a fist size and is practically it's indestructible. It is resistant to corrosion and mechanical wear. The titanic heart it doesn't beat, but it can pump blood for many years. With its design scientists have abandoned almost all moving parts. All this to make them less unreliable. Device using magnetic levitation technology, the same one that is used in high-speed trains. His only movable part is magnetically suspended double-sided rotors with left and right waistbands placed in two separate pump chambers. The technology of maglev it allows pulsed blood pressing through fast rotor cycles. The device can pump blood in the so-called small and large circulation. In the a large circulation pumps heavily oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body, we say here's about oxygenated blood. In a small circulation of pistons, deoxidized blood returning from the whole body to the lungs, where the gas exchange takes place blood gives away dioxide carbon, and it takes oxygen. The whole device is powered by a small, external, 
the portable controller. The rotor speed reaches between 2,000 to 3,000 revolutions per minute and can adapt to the physical effort of his user. Millions of people around the world suffer from heart failure, but only 6,000 of them will receive a heart from the donor, because every year it moves about the same heart transplant. Currently the best treatment option for people from severe heart failure is transplant, but not always the heart is available in time. Artificial hearts are a way to lengthen and improving the quality of life of patients eligible for transplantation there is a risk of death in anticipation of a donor. Ivacker's heart has proven itself in more than 100 days use, but it is still a shorter time than the working time the real human heart after transplant, which is over 10 years, 3000 the days. No one really knows how long a titanium device came to function in people. In VACOR laboratory similar to implanted artificial the organ has not ceased to spin for 5 years.